kept us either to something like reason or when have we lost our nerve that when people come to you and they say to you things that you know, not from bias, are nonsense, that they can't simply be dismissed as nonsense with no peril whatsoever. Well, you're, all, you're assuming that we had nerve. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. But, well, I mean, you know, some people have nerve. But one of the things I've learned over the last three years, because really this all started in October of 2016, was that the percentage of people who have nerve is very small and vanishingly small. You know, I've met people. Douglas Murray has nerve. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, Roger Scruton has nerve. Yes, he has. Lindsay Shepard has nerve. Yes, she has. Um, there's a handful of people that I've met who you, you can't move. You know, you're one of them, I would say. Um, Try. Well, succeed, I would say. And I've met a number of journalists who, you know, I've had my fair share of conflict with journalists, that's for sure. I would say talking to journalists is the most stressful thing I've done apart from talks at university campuses. Journalism, I, that's a, just to sidetrack that because it's a very good issue. Journalism, I've been playing at it from the margins for a long while. Journalism is very much corrupted. It is not the media in the middle. It is in many cases, wittingly or unwittingly, partisan. Uh, it is part of the game that it says it's covering. Uh, journalism is one of the failing institutions yeah. in this society, yeah. much as universities. Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's technological reasons for that. You know, the journalists, journalism as such is under unbelievable pressure from the new technologies, uh, YouTube, podcasts in particular, um, which of course have also vastly expanded what constitutes journalism. And yeah. so journalists are running scared. It's very difficult for them to to find paying jobs, it's, their staffs are shrinking, the newspapers are in trouble, um, television stations are vanishing, um, and so there's an increasing desperation, I would say, as well as decreasing professionalism among those who still practice, and so some of it's the personal failings of the ideologues who happen to be occupying the positions that ideologues occupy, but some of it's a consequence of these transformations in, in, in communication technology that are so vast that they're actually inconceivable. And I think YouTube, both YouTube and podcasts are, are, are great examples of that. Podcasts even more than YouTube because mm -hmm. YouTube serves billions of people, which is one walloping network. Yeah. But podcasts are maybe 10 times as popular. So, it, and that's all underground. It's interesting because yeah. they don't attract as much attention, you know, or as much, as much controversy. Um, maybe because they're more siloed in some sense, yeah. but the journalists are fighting a losing game. And, and I think as you fight a losing game, I've seen this happen with corporations, you lose your best people first, and then the death spiral begins. And, and I think we're seeing exactly that. And, mm -hmm. and then that's exaggerated by this proclivity to polarization that also might be part and parcel of the technological changes, you know. Okay.